if you closely observe this we have some uh, veins here called as uh, nervurals these are uh, the veins which are found in the wings so these lines are uh, called as veins which are uh, found here even here we have so these are not meant for uh, flight actually these are uh, the structures which protect the hind wings so the hind wings can be clearly seen here so here uh, these are the hind wings which can be clearly seen and one more important thing is that here uh, the cockroach which uh, we had uh, taken for dissection is a male here male can be identified by external morphology see this is the abdomen tip and the tip has ended here and the wings are beyond this so if the wings are uh, beyond this it is uh, male and here we have some extensions this is called as uh, the anal cerci and this uh, small uh, two extensions which we find here these are uh, anal style this is anal cerci this is anal style anal cerci is common in both males and uh, females and this is segmented this anal uh, cerci is segmented whereas the anal style is not segmented but paid uh, this is found only in uh, the males so by the presence of this anal style and the presence of the wings beyond the tip of the abdomen we can say that uh, this is a male cockroach so this is male cockroach now we are uh, going to remove these wings also so these are the wings which are used for uh, flight these are thin these are thin and uh, broader compared to this and also membranous in nature these are membranous in nature so so this is another wing which is called as a hind wing and this is useful for uh, flight two wings which are uh, broader so you can see this uh, one these are very delicate compared to the four wings so see this is broader compared to this wing so this is uh, the four wing which is uh, uh, non functional or which is not useful for uh, flight whereas uh, this is uh, the membranous one which is broader compared to this so you can see the difference here and uh, then coming to the body of the cockroach we have studied that uh, this is antenna and it is slightly broken here this is the continuation of it and here it's very clear this uh, antenna or long slender segmented uh, structures and here uh, you can see this uh, hypognathous condition of the head so this is how this is attached uh, right angle to the body it is attached right angle to the body here and the antenna is uh, found here and this is the compound eye this is compound eye and uh, these antenna are uh, tactile in function it is tactile in function and uh, here uh, the head is seen and neck is not uh, visible because uh, 
this plate which is called as uh, the pronotum. The pronotum is considered as the largest uh, scleroid of uh, the body. Whereas in case of uh, the head, uh, the fronts is the largest uh, scleroid. So that is the difference here. And uh, this is one segment which is, uh, which is related to thorax. This is second one which is uh, behind the wings, third one. So first, second, third, three segments in the thorax region. So thorax starts from here and ends here. And from here to here we have uh, the abdomen which is uh, ten segmented. And we had uh, the uh, two pairs of uh, wings, the four wings and the hind wings. And at the back we have uh, three pairs of legs which are attached to the thoracic uh, segments. So here it is very clear. These, wing, these legs are attached to the segments of thorax at the ventral side. At the ventral side. And every segment has uh, the sclerites. So we have the sclerites and these are of three types. One is uh, the dorsal sclerite ventral sclerite and uh, lateral sclerites. Now let us see the mouth parts. So yesterday we have the discussion on uh, mouth parts. So as it is a hypognathous head, we should uh, hold like this with the help of a thumb. And uh, we should first uh, open the mouth. So I have opened the mouth and this is uh, the maxillary pulp axillary pulp of uh, the first so here uh, we have uh, the upper lip in this manner which is called as labrum which is called as labrum the shape of this is uh, like this and uh, is found on the upper side so this one so you can see this I have lifted it so this one this one is uh, the upper lip so I am going to uh, remove this upper lip This is very tiny, it is not uh, visible clearly. And uh, we have the hard structures which are called as uh, mandibles. I think yesterday I have explained you about uh, the mandibles. The mandibles are uh, paid. We have two mandibles. You can see the so the mandibles are breaking. can be clearly seen here. So here 
have uh, the mandible appears to be like this. So here uh, there will be connection of uh, adductor and abductor uh, muscles. So this structure is here and we see the hair like uh, sorry the teeth like uh, structures and another uh, one will be on the opposite side so that uh, the movement of this uh, cuts the food. That expired, it is not cooperating. So, here this is the first maxillary. Actually, which is made up of uh, three parts, three parts that is uh, rotopodite, endopodite, and uh, exopodite. So, these are the three parts, and uh, we have uh, a structure like this called as cardo and um, stipes and from here uh, we have uh, the five segmented uh, maxillary pulp five segmented maxillary pulp so this is Kavato, this is Stupis, uh, and here this is called as Palpifar. These are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 segmented palp. So this palp can be seen here. This is the palp, 5 segmented uh, palp is seen here. And uh, on the inner side we have a hood like structure hood like structure called as uh, the gale and uh, a pincer like or forceps like uh, structure which is called as uh, the lacini this is gale and this is uh, lacini so here uh, these two constitute the protopodite protopodite and this is uh, the exopodite and these two are endopodite. So this is uh, the first maxillae which are uh, a pair, which are a pair and uh, these uh, are biramous in uh, nature. Biramous means two ex uh, appendages arise, two types of appendages arise. This is uh, endopodite and this is uh, exopodite. Biramous in condition. And coming to the next uh, we have uh, the, so this is another uh, this is these are the two uh, first maxillae this is one and uh, these are a pair and the next one is uh, the second maxillae which is formed by this is uh, submentum followed by mentum and uh, prementum and uh, from here there will be formation of uh, a pulp like this and 
so this is uh, uh, maxillary pulp from, which arises from pulp pigeon this is pulpy fur this is pulpy jar and here we have uh, two structures this is glossa glossa and uh, these are uh, these are paraglossa glossa paraglossa maxillary pulp and this is uh, submentum mentum prementum this is a broad structure which is uh, so these are the pulps these are the pulps and these are glossa and uh, para glossa and uh, one more part will be present here which is called as the tongue so here uh, the tongue can be clearly seen i think so this is visible here this is the tongue so the tongue is present here so uh, it is uh, very clear here, we can see this uh, uh, extension. So this is the tongue. Which is called as uh, hypopharynx. Hypopharynx. So it will uh, be in this manner. Here we have uh, the, so these are the tightness uh, bristles, and just beside that we have a duct, which is uh, afferent uh, salivary duct, where uh, the saliva opens onto the hypopharynx, which is useful for uh, mixing up uh, with the food material. Stop it.